in the world, but not of the world. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I'm going to do some teaching, preaching, and screeching, and I'm going to try to condense it at least within an hour. Amen? And some of you are saying, no, it's three minutes to 12 o'clock, and it needs to be done in three minutes. Uh, we're going to do our best to take and uh, get you out of here as quickly as I can. That's the that's the challenge of two services. But you know, I, I look around and I was sitting there thinking of just think when God when God started creation, He started with two people. Amen. He had to preach to two people. I'm going to th- interject a little thing here, a little social uh, interjection here. When God started, He started with Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. When God started, he started with Eve and Adam, not Eve and Madam. Did you get it? See, now that's not politically correct in these last days, and especially with our our, our young people who are being indoctrinated with different types of things. And you may have somebody in your family that kind of uh, falls into the category that I was just talking about, and I'm not judging. I'm just uh, making a spiritual point. What thus saith the Word of God is the final authority. Amen? What God's Word says is the final authority. I hope you've had a good week. I've got a lot written down. I only have two and a portion of page, not four pages like I normally do. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of get started through it. Uh, I learned a long time ago, y'all should know this by now, stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, and shut up to be appreciated. Amen? Or, excuse me, hush up to be appreciated. Shut up's a strong word. Every now and then when I kind of get out, my wife says, just shut up. It'll be okay if you just shut up. But you know how some people love to pick and prod and poke and, you know, remember the old, um, well, some of you don't remember the old mules. I don't remember them, so I'm not that old. Some of you may, when they couldn't get old mule uh, to go, they would gourd him or they prod him or they put blinders on him so he wouldn't be distracted by the things in the world but not of the world. In the world, but not of the world. Hopefully you've had a good week. I hope that you've allowed God to be first and foremost in your life this week. Amen. One verse of Scripture, Hebrews the 7th chapter, uh, Hebrews the 9th chapter, verse 27. Hebrews 9 and 27. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And as it is appointed unto men, women, boys, and girls uh, once to die, but after that the judgment. You're either going to go by, we're either going to go by way of the judgment or we're going to go by way of the rapture. But One day we're going to die. This physical being that we live in, this thing that we called our vessel, our temple, is going to die. It's not going to inherit eternal bliss. It's not going to go from from earth to glory. It's not going to go from earth uh, to to, to eternal damnation. It's going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the Bible says, The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, what? Comfort one another with these words. Listen to this. I'm going to be very candid with you today. There are two judgments. The first judgment is found in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 9. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 9. I love those things. Those I can see that big screen up there. So I'm going to try my best to read there. I don't have to turn to it. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse 9. It says, Wherefore Therefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his or her body according to that which they have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. God is not a God of terror as far as what we know is terrorist acts nowadays, hearing it every day, sometimes hour by hour, uh, what, in Denmark, two attacks yesterday. Two attacks yesterday. The, they, they've caught the gunmen, supposedly. They don't know whether it was a lot. These are lone wolf attacks or whether they're going to kind of go. But but when it says up there that God, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, it's not a terrorist act to do you harm, to violate, to violate who you are or to hurt you, but it's just to let you know that he's a God of judgment. 
He's a God of judgment. If you do good, he's going to bless us. If we do wrong, he's going to judge us. It says we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. I hope that when people see you and when people see me and when people see us, that they see the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, I told you, Claudia, I was going to put her to sleep. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are two judgments that are coming, the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. We are going to stand before one or the other. If you're saved, you're going to stand before, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. If you're unsaved, you're going to stand before the great white throne judgment. Let me go on. We only pass through this life once. What we do, listen to this, what we do does matter. Listen, what we do does matter. How we act does matter. How we treat others does matter. Who we associate with does matter. Now, some people have, uh, some churches have preached over the years, and, and I've had the privilege of serving the Lord and sitting under a lot of great ministers over the years. But some churches actually preach that once you get saved, you're basically supposed to push all the other heathens and the, the ungodly people aside. No, that's when you really need to be a witness to them. That's when you really need to let them know that you've been changed. You've been changed by the power of Christ. You didn't turn over a new leaf. You didn't start a new year, have a New Year's resolution. You decided to change, and instead of doing a 360, you decided to do a 180 and go and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But with that being said, we have to be careful where we walk, where we go, how we act, who we associate with. Because sometimes you, 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 me, we aren't strong enough to, to, it's just like an alcoholic. An alcoholic or a drug addict. You take an alcoholic who, is, who has been changed and then you start getting them in an environment of drinking or alcohol all around them, there, there's a strong point that they might be pulled back into that, a drug addict. So we have to be careful who we associate, but we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Who we associate with does matter. Listen to this. Where we go, what we say, what we look at, and what we think is important. All of those determine our eternal destiny. Listen to this. There, a quick story. I'm going to condense it for the sake of time. Uh, the, the, there was a preacher who had a parrot, and he would take his parrot to church with him. And the preacher died. And the preacher had a bartending brother. So the bartending brother received the parrot took the parrot to the bar, set the uh, parrot up there, and as the people began to come in, the parrot began to say, same crowd, same crowd, same crowd that was going to church was attending the bar. We need to be different. We aren't perfect, but we are forgiven. We aren't perfect. You know, I, 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 I'll probably get a big amen. Uh, I, no matter what, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're not perfect. But we have been forgiven. The blood of Jesus has been applied. Page two. Good day. Paul Harvey. This is the rest of the story. Listen, are we going up or are we going down? Are we going to spend eternity in heaven or are we going to spend eternity in hell? That choice is yours. Pastor Ron, Pastor Brandon, this leadership team here at the church, they will do everything they can to encourage you, to motivate you, to pride you, sometimes to even beg you, sometimes to even challenge you to get up off of your seat of do nothing and get involved in the fight of the Lord. But they can't make you. They cannot make you go to heaven. They cannot determine your eternal destiny. We have to decide that for ourselves. I'm trying to get there, my friend. We are living in the last days. Do you believe that? Do you believe we're living in the last days? Look all around you. Violence everywhere. You know, we used to hear of it over in the Middle East or over on on foreign soil, Somalia, all uh, over in Africa or over in the Middle East. We heard of the violence, the terror. Now it's on our own soil. 
here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, an act of violence, an act of hatred here in our local area. And I say this, and I say it with, with, with great caution and great, great understanding that, that, that an extra, a, a crazy person could come in this church at any moment and begin to say, hey, I don't like your God. This atheist guy that killed these three Muslim uh, people, he hit on his Facebook, I'm, an, I'm a diehard atheist. I hate anything about religion. It was over a parking space. No. He had that deep-seated hatred towards religion. And anybody, the, it just happened to be a Muslim. It could have been a Christian. It could have been a, a Bible thumper. It could have been a Jehovah Witness, could have been a Mormon, could have been any religious group. But listen, let me tell you something, my friend. There's a difference between being religious and being Christian. Religion is a form, a creed, a what? Christianity is a lifestyle. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And when it has leap year, 366. You don't get a day off. You need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Listen to this. Scholars, scholars and church folk alike understand there is nothing left. Listen, nothing left to be fulfilled that would stop that event called the rapture from taking place. You're going up or you're going down. We're going by the way of the rapture or we're going by way of death. Hebrews 9 and 27, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that the judgment. I'm trying my best. Who likes a challenge? See? Y'all like a challenge. Some of you like it. Some of you took the ice bucket challenge. I wasn't that brave. I would have said I wasn't that mentally challenged. There's another word for that. You know that some people, it actually can stop your heart. That cold hits you, and your body cannot adjust as quickly. I mean, how many of you are ever primed tobacco? Exactly. My brother knows that. You, you get out there in the field, and you get, it's 100 degrees, and you're priming the back, and you're, the monkey's on your back, and you've you know, you're, you got lobotom primings. You know, now they've got machineries for all that. And you're down there, and all of a sudden you get out, and you're, you're just sweating, and you, you take that bucket of ice, and you pour it on you, and all of a sudden your body can't adjust, and it goes into shock and can send you out into eternity. So you, you, we have to be careful about challenges. Now, some challenges work out good. The, our youth director about, you know, he, he shaved his head. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Claudia. You kind of just went right with it, a visual there. You know, challenge the kid. So challenges are good. I want to challenge you in these closing few moments. I want to challenge you uh, to, 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 to do some things between now and eternity, between now and the end of this month, between now and the end of this year. First challenge, I want to, I want to challenge you to realize your life is important. Your life is important. Every one of you, from my sister up here to my, uh, my sister back there to each one, we are important. We, we, we matter to God. We matter to God. I matter to God. You matter to God. We matter to God. Our life, I want you to challenge you to realize that when next time the devil comes up and says, boo, he says, who are you talking to? I matter to God. I am important. Number two. I want to challenge you to look beyond yourself and begin to put others first. First of all, we need to put God first. Second of all, we need to put others before ourselves. I don't know why I want to say this. I have no reason. I have no rhyme or reason. It's just one of those Pastor Ron moments that you interject something that seems totally off the wall. I'm not as tactful as he is. He's a little bit more tactful. He's more disciplined, and, and, and it comes out a whole lot better when he says it. But I'm going to just interject something. I want to challenge you right now to, 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 to I don't know why I'm saying this, but Lord, forgive me if I'm wrong. Help me if I'm right. 
Those of you who have that thing called road rage, for some reason it's there. It's in my spirit right now to tell you, you need to get a grip. And 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 my, my I, you know totally and I say this before my son right now I, I'm not even including you in this son you didn't even come to my mind I don't know anything about the rest of you but for some reason I, I just I'm going to just over uh, emphasize and go on so for some reason the spirit I, I'm feeling in my spirit to tell you you need to get a grip on that thing because it's going to backfire on you if you're not careful. You're going to hurt somebody or somebody's going to hurt you with that. Now, 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 now I, I wasn't when I first said it, feeling it, but I am really feeling it now. Get a grip. I wasn't pointing at you. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. My wife says, if you, can't talk, if you couldn't talk with your hands, you couldn't make it. Get a grip before it slips. Okay, it's there. And that, I, I, God is my witness. You can check my notes. I'm not writing anything down. You can have my ink. It's not there, but it is there. Take it for what it's worth. Look beyond yourself and begin to think about us. Number three, challenge number three. Understand that God will work it, and I've got it out, circled. I've got it circled. Whatever it is, my friend, whatever you need God to work out, young people, older people, whatever you need God to work out, he'll work it out. Take away, uh, my, my wife. My wife and I, we have our, our, our moments sometime, and we have our heated debates sometime, and, and I just say, just let it go. God will work it out. Now, you are, are you an, a pessimist or are you, are you an optimist? The optimist says the glass is half full. The pessimist says the glass is half empty. I want to challenge you to get a grip and realize, realize that God will work it out. Number four, I want you to, uh, our challenge number four, I want you to think about how you can better serve God this year. How can I better serve God? How can I get more involved in the church that God has placed me at? How can I get more involved for the Lord? How can I serve God better? Number five, how can I, challenge number five, how can I be in a, a better example of true Christianity? True Christianity. There's a lot of people that are playing games in the Christian walk. I've had the privilege of serving God for many, many years. I, excuse me, let me rephrase it. I've had the privilege of, of doing my best to and making a conscious effort and a conscious choice to serve my Heavenly Father. God knew when I was playing games. He knew when I was uh, sincere, and he knew when I was half sincere. He knew when I was cold, and he knew, knew when I was hot, and he knew when I was lukewarm. Like Ron said this morning, and he's, he's cautioned us about using his messages, but every now and then the Lord has to get a spiritual belt out and whip us. That's not politically correct. That's not socially acceptable. When I was growing up, my mom didn't take the belt. She took the tobacco sticks and the broom handles. And I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, this is loaded, what I'm fixing to say. I, I think I turned out okay. <laughs> I had to be careful with that one. But you know what I mean? And there's a difference between abusing and correcting. Number five, be an example of true Christianity. Number six, I want to challenge you to do whatever it takes to make it to heaven. Don't compromise, people. We're too close to eternity. The king is coming. The Lord Jesus Christ, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, he's coming one day. He's coming back for you, for me, for us, for those who are ready, not for those who are perfect, but for those who are striving towards perfection. Listen to this. Closing, that's one. How many did I say there is? Seven. It's only going to be three today, brother. Just for you. We've got a condensed version. If I would be, was in the AM service, it would be seven. But since we're in the PM service, closing. 
God didn't have to send Jesus, but he did. God doesn't have to love us, but he does. God doesn't have to show us forgiveness because it isn't deserved, but he does show us forgiveness. Listen to this, and I've got it written up my paper so I wouldn't have to take and write a whole nother paper because if I got started on the third page, there would be three pages to get to you, and I don't have that kind of time. So listen, I'm going to go up. The, I've got my little arrows up here. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Go to God. Have faith. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Pastor Ron is challenging the, uh, uh, us to get out of, off of Facebook sometime and get into God's book. God's book and Facebook are two different things. God's book will change you. Facebook will change you, too. God is good, isn't he? 